Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Thank you for watching. We have the legend Greg Dickerson with us for episode number two. How you doing, sir? Doing great, Michael. How are you? I'm doing well, folks. If you haven't seen episode number one yet, just remember Greg surprised me with his answer. Go back and watch it. It was kind of hilarious, my reaction. Uh, <laughs> but in this interview, Greg, uh, where we talked about Grant Cardone in the first one, I want to talk about a, a young man, Max Maxwell. Uh, he is someone I followed for several years now, actually lucky enough to meet him once. And he put out a video on Instagram, I believe it was, talking about he believes that more wealth will be created and lost. So I guess wealth transfer in the next five years uh, than in the last several decades. That one hit me kind of odd, uh, having experienced the real estate apocalypse of the Great Recession. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you, what do you think? Do you think there's going to be a lot of wealth transfer in the next five years? Do you think it'll be a record? What do you think? You know, I'd have to see, I haven't seen the video, so I don't know what context he put around that statement. So mm -hmm. um, there's been a lot of wealth created, like you said, and and destroyed. I mean, go back to the Great Depression, you know, go yeah. back to um, the dot-com boom and bust, go back to 2008 and nine. So, you know, to make a statement like that, the question is what, you know, indicators is he using? What sector is he talking about? Uh, you know, things like that. I mean, we've been in a wealth transfer since 08, 09 mm. with quantitative easing, monetary policy. So uh, there's been so much, uh, you know, currency created, mm -hmm. um, so much liquidity created, it is going more exclusively into the hands of the few. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're going to deflate at some point and a lot of that liquidity is going to get wiped out. Uh, the question is, who does it affect the most? And, you know, how, how does the government react to that? And, you know, what are the consequences? What does it look like? So I don't know if he was speaking of real estate specifically. I think you're talking about Max Maxwell, the wholesale Correct. guy. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure he was in the business 2008 and nine. I don't know when he started. Yeah. So I don't know if he went through that or understands how much uh, liquidity, value and capital was wiped off the table at, you know, back then and then yeah. how much was created. Yeah, I think response. there. Yeah, so I'll, I'll do my best to kind of replay because I watch so many different things. Really, what he was, really his goal in that video, I believe, was to to help people wake up that we are going to go into a transition, right? I think his point was the last three or four years, right, with quantitative easing, it's 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 been kind of easy to make money, right? The stock market's mm -hmm. up, real estate's up, and I believe what he is pointing at, uh, and again, this is my my words, not his. Uh, is that, you know what, the next five years are going to be different. Uh, I think he's right, right? I think, I think there'll be some interest rate changes. I think the powers that be will suck liquidity out of the system. I think the bond buying in the, in the mortgage market will certainly decrease, if not stop, over the next several years. Um, when, I, when I listened to that, and it was only like 90 seconds. It might have been three minutes. Yeah. Uh, but re really what I was left thinking is, okay, you know, just, I mean, just today, right? AMC, a big meme stock is up another 20 or some odd percent because of a short squeeze. I think there's a lot of liquidity chasing artificial hype. And, you know, as interest rates rise and liquidity is pulled back, um, you know, I think we'll see less of that. Uh, I yeah, think the network effect is real, man. When you look oh. at what the network effect has done, you know, in the retail sector of stocks and, mm -hmm. Um, you know, other asset, you know, other types of assets. It's very, very interesting. And so, yeah, so I'll, I'll agree definitely that there's been more wealth created in the last, you know, few years than probably ever in the history mm. of the country, largely due to the, you know, liquidity that's out there. And that's what we have. We have a liquidity, a liquidity problem. Exactly. So the I real question is, you know, what, what's the end result of that? Now, it's kind of hard to know because we've been on this path since 0809. We've mm. literally been on this path since 0809. It's been just straight up from there. I mean, we've been in a bull market in stocks, commodities, everything since then. Gold. I mean, everything's just been straight to the to the moon. You know, cryptos are off. You know, they're they've just been parabolic over the last year. So, you know, real estate's gone straight up. I mean, we never would have thought we'd see 30, 20, 30, 40%, yeah. you know, uh, increases in values of real estate. We've seen that in the last year. I yeah, mean, it's just crazy. nuts. Now yeah. we are seeing things start to slow down. The other interesting thing is what I like about that comment is, you know, um, what I've always said is any fool can make a million. It takes a genius to keep it, right? No, so, oh, Yes. You know, easy come, easy go, right? You make a lot of money fast, it goes away fast. What goes up comes down. 
Um, so it, it's going to be very interesting to see how those things change over time. And, you know, I get people reaching out all the time. I had a family office reach out today that just uh, liquidated a bunch of real estate and is looking to invest. And, you know, they're like, well, where do we put it? Yeah. You know, because everything is so overinflated right now. What do you do? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that's when I thought about that statement. And usually when I see something that kind of shakes me like that, I stop and I just, mm. I think for a while. And the one thing I have to agree is, um, I think there is a lot of bad deals being done in, by syndicators or, or, you know, commercial sectors that have interest rate risk, three, five, seven year terms, right? I think there are just flat out bad deals being done that may feel good today that I think that I don't think feel good five years from now. And, and I think that's- You know, and it's all about. levels. I mean, there's an article out today um, about the United Arab Emirates, you know, defaulting on debt, you know, yeah, I and saw they're- that. Yeah. yeah, their real estate market taking a hit. And I mean, they were the leaders of the world when it came to real estate, just building these yeah. huge, huge, you know, buildings that just, you know, unbelievable, endless supply of money, you mm -hmm. know, from that country, they're in trouble. So it's like, you know, I mean, how does that happen? Yeah. Well, again, you, you, yeah, it's, it's just, I guess, I don't know if it's over leverage or it really is to me is there's a lot of bad assumptions, right? When you are getting into a commercial based deal, they're all based on assumptions, rent growth, costs, cap rate compression or expansion. And I think there's just bad assumptions, right? I see them. I mean, I, I get weekly dozens of requests to be a part of this or that syndication and all of their spreadsheets assume what I believe are unrealistic rent growth. They have bad assumptions on costs. And again, I own these things, right? Again, mm -hmm. it's, it's not in the market that I'm being offered, but I'm like, these assumptions are bad. And who, who said that, you know, a five cap is going to go to a four and a half. I mean, folks, this is going to turn around when, when inflation goes up. So I, I think there's a well, lot. Well, it's interest rates. Yeah. It's, it's all interest rates. And, you know, as soon as those, a lot of those deals are being done on interest only loans. So if the oh. rates reset, you know, it's, it's going to be difficult. Their assumptions are rents are going to go up and up and up every year, never come back down. You know, you reach a point in the rental market where people just can only pay so much for rent and then they can't pay. You've got, you know, rent controls coming out everywhere, you know, especially through the pandemic, there's a lot of attacks on landlords and, you know, rentals and things like that. But here's, here's the biggest thing. And I did a video on this the other day. Mm -hmm. The most important thing to know in any market is the top, not the bottom. Everybody yes. thinks the bottom's where it's at. The top is the most important thing to know in every market. And I don't care what asset it is, just because it's worth something today, doesn't mean it's cheap if it's worth half as much tomorrow. So let's just take you know, uh, anything, let's just take a piece of real estate. You know, if you have a piece of real estate that once sold for $10 million, just because you can buy it for five today, doesn't mean that's cheap. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people think. They think that these prices are just going to go up and up and up on everything. And that, um, you know, just because Bitcoin hit $65,000, you know, earlier this year, that now that you can buy it at 35, that, well, that's cheap. Yeah. Well, you know, you forget, Bitcoin was $6,000 a year ago. Right. So, uh, you know, cheap is a relative term in relation to the liquidity pool in the market and the availability of um, takers at that price. So yeah. what goes up comes down, you know, good times never last, bad times never last. We've gone through booms and busts through the economy. Now, I have been interestingly, interestingly surprised and shocked by how long this has lasted in the markets with what we've seen. But there's a lot of people out there um, that are getting very concerned about where we're at in the market. So yeah. I think we're reaching a peak all across the board. And when the markets begin their correction and interest rates start to rise, the Fed's got nowhere else to go. Yeah. I think there's a couple of things in that statement that I just want to kind of reiterate. First and foremost, I've been through several manias in my adult investing career. And for a while, it, it just seems to go on longer than you expect. And I call it the greater fool theory, right? You buy something with the anticipation of it going up just because. And, you know, if you decide to sell, you know, lots of people make money, right? With the greater fool theory, right? They get in, get out. But unfortunately, a lot of the newer investors get in and then they just start playing what ifs and, you know, leverage and all of this. And you just stay at the party too long. And, you know, pretty soon the cops show up, the Fed raises rates and, you, you, you know, your winnings are gone, right? It's, it's kind of a casino mentality. So be careful, right? You know, it's, it's, it's okay to trade. 
it's interesting, you know, earlier in my career from 97 to, you know, 08, 09, um, as things were going up and, and we were, we were busier and busier, I'd never been through a, you know, boom bust cycle. I mean, I bought my first house in 1990, so it was kind of slow and sluggish, but as things were on the rise, you know, I was in real estate primarily and, you know, they're not making any more of it, right? Real estate, it's limited. You can't create or destroy land. So, um, you know, we just didn't think it could change. I mean, it was going up and up and up. And it wasn't that I thought, you know, this exu irrational exuberance or, or whatever, when you get to these market cycle tops, it was just, man, this is what we know. This is what we've done. You know, there's no reason for it to stop because, you know, interest rates are low, everything's good. But then all of a sudden it just shut off like a faucet. And what was interesting was a lot of the older um, group that I was around, the old timers that, that had been through it before through the boom and bust cycle, they were like, you know, the last market cycle crash, and I can't remember what they were talking about. Maybe it was the uh, savings and loan crisis. They're the like, 80s, yeah. it shut off like a water faucet. And I, and I was like, you know, it just doesn't seem like that's possible when everything is so good. Yeah. And sure enough, man, 08, 09, it shut off like a water faucet. It did. And, you know, a few people saw that coming. Comin Most people didn't know that was coming. Mm -mm. And look at what the pandemic did. You know, the pandemic, you know, thank goodness wasn't as bad as it could have been. And, you know, you get some sort of black swan or something that almost nobody sees coming. Uh, it could change conditions very, very fast. And, you know, that's the thing that, that stuck with me and will always stick with me that a lot of people that are newer into these markets and things just don't seem to understand. They see something like stocks just shoot through the moon. They see stuff like crypto shoot through the moon. You see real estate shooting through the moon. They just don't think it can ever come back. Yeah. Let me tell you, it can come back and it can come back way faster than you ever thought it could. Yeah. One of the things that I've often said to folks is, is when I'm trying to communicate just how fast that could happen. I like to tell, I always like stories or analogies because I think people remember them. Stocks, crypto, real estate often take the stairs up, but they take the elevator down, if that makes any sense. Right. It's just yeah, the, well, they've the all rate. taken the rocket ship up yeah. this past year, <laughs> you know, because of the liquidity from the pandemic. Yeah. That's the thing to remember. The only reason we are at levels we're at is because of the, the, the free money, the liquidity that's been created. At some point that has to stop. God, yes. You know, you just, you can only get so far. And hey, the housing market is already starting to take a little tick down right now lately because buyer fatigue, you know, buyers are getting frustrated. You know, a lot of it's the summer. People are out and about and traveling and doing that. So, mm -hmm. you know, you always get a little bit of a dip in most markets in the summer. You know, so we'll see how that comes back in the fall. But um uh, you know, it's it's going to be interesting to see how things go forward. Now, that doesn't mean don't do deals. It doesn't no. mean don't get out there and get active. It just means be smart, protect yourself, and expect a downturn. Expect mm. the worst case scenario. Hope for the best. Plan for the worst. Yes. Make sure you've got your contingencies in place that you know what your risk is. You've actually mm. accurately calculated that risk and that you can withstand the worst case scenario and or you've protected yourself for when that event happens. And, you know, that's what you need to do as a prudent investor. So what does that mean? Don't guarantee debt. Don't put up too much equity mm -hmm. that you can't afford to lose if it does get wiped out. In other words, if you buy a property now, you put, you know, uh, a down payment on it of 20, 30%. If all of a sudden that property is worth half of what it is and you've lost all your equity, that means you've lost your down payment. You ain't getting it back out. Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure that if you are banking on getting that back out on a refi doing the Burr method, mm -hmm. you know, you need to have a plan in place. What if I can't access that equity? Yep. What if I can't liquidate the property because it won't pay the loan off and it won't return on equity? So you need to have all those contingencies in place and just make sure that you're prepared for that and that you've protected yourself in the event that you know things go down and you have to liquidate because we all liquidate sooner or later. Yeah, Nobody well. gets out of here alive. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, nobody yeah. getting out of this world alive. Yeah, you're yeah. going to liquidate. So yeah, it's going to happen. Yeah. The, best, the best time to liquidate is when you can and when you want to, not when you have to not and you're forced to. to. Yeah. The last thing I want to say is if, if, if you are looking at any asset and part of your calculation is some supposed appreciation, not a good idea, right? If, if you're banking, because I remember back in 08, before the crash really started, people were, people were betting on appreciation. I had a buddy who said, hey, I can, ca I can hold five or four or five negative cash flow buildings or houses. And I'm like, what are you doing? They, they cash for like negative $200 a month when it's a great month. What the hell are you mm -hmm. doing? Oh, but Michael, you don't understand. It's going up 10% a year. And you know, if it goes up 10% a year for five more years, I'll be worth a million dollars or whatever the hell he said. I'm like, oh, not good. Not when you have negative cash flow, 
any hiccup, it's it's very easy to kind of throw in the keys, and that's what he had to do: short sell them and and let them all go. So yeah, yeah don't bet yeah, on it can happen and it can happen quick. And, you know, so now short term, sure. You can speculate a little bit short term because we are, you know, uh, rapidly appreciating in a lot of ways, trading, getting in and out of stocks, getting in and out of, you know, things like that, real estate flipping, you know, there's still opportunity there, but you got to watch the market. You got to be careful, mm-hmm. especially days on market, you know, for sale signs. If you see for sale signs, all of a sudden pop yeah. up or you didn't see them before and they're not going anywhere um you know that's that's time to start paying attention so monitor days on markets uh days on market you know monitor the overall markets we are in a macro environment now you know everything follows the markets if the markets are up and down everything else is up and down with it there you go well folks uh, do yourself a favor greg dickerson below has an entire playlist there's hundreds of hours of content of us talking about important topics so greg thank you very much for your time i look forward to number three yeah man